Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today we're going to talk about specific heat capacity. And specific heat capacity helps us understand why some things are really easy to heat up and some things are more difficult to heat up. So if you take a look at this pan and it's sitting on the stove, what do you think is going to be hotter? That wooden handle or the metal? And we all know the answer is the metal. You don't want to touch the metal. You'd much rather touch that wooden handle. That's why the wooden handle is there. And in part, the reason that wooden handle is cooler than the metal is heat capacity. So it takes more energy to heat up wood than it does to heat up metal. And so that metal gets hotter faster. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to be talking about how easy or hard it is to heat something up. And the way we're going to do that is with this thing specific heat capacity. Specifically, we're going to think about how much hotter things get. So you might ask the question, how much hotter is the metal than the wood? And there we're thinking about a change in temperature. How much more did the temperature of metal increase than the temperature of the wood? And we can calculate that using our specific heat equation. So I'll show you that equation now, and I'll introduce it piece by piece. And then we're going to go ahead and do a few practice problems using specific heat capacity. So first of all, you see that what we're calculating is this change in temperature. And that triangle you see there is called delta. It's a Greek letter. Whenever you see that, we're calculating something that's a change. So that's a change in temperature. And the more heat we add, which is Q, the bigger that change in temperature. Mass, on the other hand, the mass of the object we're heating is on the bottom. And the bigger the object, the more energy it takes to heat it up. So if I have a big old giant pan, it's going to take more energy to heat it up than if I have a very small pan. The last thing you see here is the specific heat capacity. And heat capacity just tells us how hard it is to heat something up. And that's something you look up in a table. Scientists have gone out and measured this for a bunch of different materials, and if you Google it on the internet, you can get a list that is longer than you want to read about all the different materials and their heat capacities. So let's take a closer look at the heat capacity of wood and metal. You can think about heat capacity as basically being a bucket. And we're adding heat into that bucket, and how high that heat rises is like how much temperature increase we have. And so you can think of wood over here as being something that has a very large bottom to the bucket. So this is not narrow, it's very wide. And as we add heat, it takes more heat to increase in temperature. So we add some heat, and you can see here that it's saying the wood went up 1,000 degrees. On the other hand, metal is like something with a very narrow bottom. And when I add the same amount of heat, we get a much larger rise in temperature. So we've added the same amount of heat to both of these, but because our wood has a large heat capacity, its temperatures increased less. And we can see that also in the table over here. So this is a table that shows you the substance, wood in this case over here, and its heat capacity. So the heat capacity of wood is 1.76 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And what that's telling you is, if you add 1.76 joules of heat to a gram of wood, it'll heat up one degree Celsius. On the other hand, it only takes 0.23 joules to heat up one gram of steel, one degree Celsius. So it takes much less energy to heat up steel than it does to heat up wood. And that's part of the reason that that wood handle is cooler than the steel. Now, the types of problems we can do with this is we can calculate the change in temperature, and that's maybe the most typical problem, but we can also calculate how much heat was added, we can calculate the mass of the object, and we can actually use heat capacity to identify what something is made of. If we know the change in temperature, we know Q, and we know M, we can calculate CS. We'll do an example problem like that in just a second. But first, let's do kind of the most basic problem, which is just calculating the change in temperature. And here we see their problem says 372 joules of heat is applied to a 1,200 gram steel pan. How much does the temperature increase? And I've broken the process down of solving these problems into three steps. And the first thing we want to do, which is very often the first step when we're using equations, is I just identify what we know and what we want to find. So identify the knowns and unknowns. And right away we're told that we have 372 joules. And it tells us that that's 372 joules of heat. And remember, heat we symbolize with a Q in our equations. So this is how much heat is added, 372 joules. So that's something we know. That's right there. And it's applied to a 1,200 gram pan. So that's our mass. We also know our mass. Our mass is 1,200 grams. Lastly, we're told that it's made of steel. And that's actually really important because when things are made of different materials, they're more or less difficult to heat up. So since we know it's steel, that's actually telling us the heat capacity. And here's an important point. 
you often have to look up the heat capacity in a table. You might have to look it up in the back of your book, or you might have to look it up at the back of your test in a list of tables if you're on doing a test. And so we go to our table, which only has two substances, substances in it, and we look at steel, and we see that its heat capacity is 0.23 joules per gram degree Celsius. So heat capacity is something we look up. It's not usually given to you in the problem. Sometimes it may be. And so we know our heat capacity, too. And it's 0 0.23 grams, or I'm sorry, joules, per gram Celsius. All right, so that's what we know. So that's the first part of step one. Now we want to identify the unknowns. What is it that we're looking for? And it asks for how much the temperature increases. And our variable which symbolizes temperature increase is delta T. So we want to solve for delta T. And notice that we've been given three variables and we're solving a fourth. And our equation has four variables. So we're all set to go ahead and solve this. So the ne second step is just convert units if needed. Now, how do you know what units you need? Well, the units need to match the specific heat capacity. So they have to be joules, grams, and degrees Celsius. And we can see that we have joules, grams, and we're gonna calculate the change in temperature, which will be in degrees Celsius. So we're good on units in this problem, but that's actually the trickiest part maybe of these heat capacity problems is you always have to look at the units and make sure they match your specific heat capacity. So now we go to step three, which is just rearrange our equation for our unknown and solve. And so our equation tells us delta T is equal to Q divided by CS times mass. And we're actually solving for delta T. So our equation's already rearranged. So we don't even have to do any algebra, we just go ahead and plug in the values we have. So we have 372 joules up top, and that's gonna be divided by our heat capacity, which is 0 0.23, times our mass, which we're told is 1,200 grams. So we have 372 divided by 0 0.23 times 1,200. If I plug that into my calculator, I'll get that this is a 1.3 degrees Celsius change. So what does that tell us? That tells us that our pan that we've applied 372 joules of heat to has increased in temperature by 1.3 degrees Celsius. And this is sort of the most basic problem you'll do in heat capacity calculating a temperature change where all the units are already laid out nicely for you. Let's go to another problem. Here, we're gonna calculate mass. And this is another heat capacity problem you might see. So we'll know the heat we add and the change in temperature and what the material is made of. And that'll allow us to actually calculate mass. So let's go ahead and follow step one, which tells us to identify our knowns and unknowns. And right here, it says that we have glass. And so right away, that tells us our specific heat capacity. So we got to keep a careful eye out for the material in these problems, because that tells us what it's made of. And we know that glass, if we go over and look at our table, has a heat capacity of 0 0.84 joules per gram degree Celsius. So that's 0 0.84 joules per gram degree Celsius. All right, and it tells us that it absorbs 221 joules of heat. So we know our Q. And lastly, it tells us that the temperature increases by 2.1 degrees Kelvin. So delta T equals 2.1 Kelvin. I shouldn't say degrees, there's no degrees there. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to convert units if needed. Well, our heat is in joules. Our specific heat capacity is fine because we pulled that right from the table. But you'll notice that our change in temperature is in Kelvin. Here's an important point. When you're dealing with a change in temperature, the degree of one degree Celsius is actually equal exactly to one Kelvin. So you don't have to add 273 because this is a change in temperature and the degree units of Kelvin and Celsius are the same exact size. So we don't actually need to do any real conversion here when we're dealing with a change in temperature, and only a change in temperature, one degree Celsius, a change of one degree Celsius is equal to a change of one Kelvin. So it tells us our change in temperature in Kelvin, but that's actually identical to our change in temperature in Celsius. Because one degree Kelvin and one degree Celsius are exactly the same size. All right, so we don't need to actually do any real unit conversions, we just need to identify the fact that our change in temperature of 2.1 Kelvin is the same as a change of 2.1 degrees Celsius. All right, now we rearrange and we solve for our unknowns, the last step. So this time we wanna solve for mass. And so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna start with our equation, which is delta T 
equals Q over CS times N. And the way we're going to get mass on both sides, or the way we're going to get mass by itself is we're going to multiply mass by both sides. So we times by N. And that's going to get rid of our masses over here. And that's going to give us the new equation, M delta T equals Q over CS. All right, now to get mass by itself, we're going to divide both sides by T. And the delta T over here is going to cancel out. And what we're left with is the equation that our mass is equal to Q divided by CS times delta D. Mass is equal to Q divided by CS times delta T. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and plug in our numbers. So for Q, we plug in 221 joules of heat divided by our heat capacity, which we found from our table, which is 0.84. And then we multiply that by our change in temperature, which is 2.1 degrees Celsius. And when we plug that into our calculator, we're going to get out that the mass to two sig figs is 130 grams. So that's the mass. We can use specific heat capacity if we know how much heat we've added and what our material is made of to calculate the mass of that object. So that's another application of heat capacity you'll often see. So thanks for watching this video about specific heat capacity. You've learned how to do a couple of the different standard problems you see and heat capacity. If you have any further questions, please ask them below. You can also subscribe to receive future updates about real chemistry videos.